Lines chapter 5. What we will learn today. To classify the angles formed when two lines are cut by a transversal. And to find missing angle measures when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. So we will classify and we'll find the missing angle measures. Here is a list of the vocabulary words in this lesson. The first word is perpendicular lines and our symbol. You, know, you can say it's an upside down T. Parallel lines, two bars or two lines. Transversal, interior angles, exterior angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, corresponding angles. And last we have M and the symbol of angle and um, one. What, how you read that is the measure of angle one. Transversals and angles. A line that intersects two or more lines is called a transversal. In this case, it's this line, this negative line that you see there. That's the transversal. Interior angles lie inside the lines. So in this example, we're looking at three, four, five, and six. They're interior, they, they're inside both of the lines. And the lines that I'm talking about, this line and that line. So interior, they're inside. Exterior angles lie outside the lines. In this example, one, two, eight, and seven. Alternate interior angles are interior angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal. When the lines are parallel, their measures are equal. Very important to remember this. So the measurement of angle four, so let me erase all this so we can look at this separately. The measurement of angle four is equal to the measurement of angle six. Those are alternate interior angles. So basically they're on the opposite side of the transversal Measurement of angle three is equal to the measurement of angle five. Alternate exterior angles are exterior angles that lie on the opposite, opposite sides of the transversal. When the lines are parallel, the measures are equal. So the measurement of angle one is going to be equal to or the same as the measurement of angle seven. The measurements of angle two or the measurement of angle two is going to be equal to the measurement of angle eight. Corresponding angles are those angles that are in the same position on the two lines in relation to the transversal. When the lines are parallel, their measures are equal. So the measurement of angle one is equal to the measurement of angle five. So there's corresponding, they are in the same position Measurement of angle two is equal to measurement of angle six. Measurement of angle four is equal to the measurement of angle eight. And last but not least, the measurement of angle three is equal to the measurement of angle seven. A lot of stuff, but make sure once you get the differences uh, be between interior and exterior, alternate interior angles and alternate exterior angles and then correspond corresponding angles, you should be okay. It's a uh, tedious process, but it can be done. In this slide, I talk about the special notations to use that are used to indicate perpendicular and parallel lines. So a red right angle symbol, which is right here, and I'm sure you've seen this before, that represents that lines M and N are perpendicular. Okay. That right angle tells us they're perpendicular. Red arrowheads indicate that P and Q are parallel. So these two red arrowheads signify that these two lines are parallel. And here we look at the symbols. M is perpendicular to N. P is parallel to Q. In our first example, we're being asked to classify angle pairs. Classify the pair of angles in the figure as alternate interior alternate exterior or corresponding. So we're going to be looking at angle four and angle 
six. And notice I put those circles around. Okay. The first thing I want to look at is, okay, I circle those two. And I notice that they're, here's my transversal. Here are my two parallel lines. I'll use my symbol to simplify. Parallel lines. And I notice that they are on the inside of the two parallel lines. So that's going to tell me that these are going to be interior. So they're going to be alternate. That's not how you spell alternate. Alternate interior. Okay. So we know they're not exterior because they would have to be on the outside. Okay. That's exterior. So it's not that. Corresponding. Corresponding to four would actually be eight. Corresponding to six would actually be three. Because corresponding means they are in the same position on the on the other line. Okay, so for this in this case, they are alternate interior angles. As long as you write alternate interior, you should be fine. This next graphic tells us about finding missing angle measures. When two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, and again here's our transversal, special angle relationships exist. If you know the measure of one of the angles, you can find the measure of all of the angles. Suppose you know that the measurement of angle one, so angle one right there, is 50 degrees. So if that's 50 degrees, then angle two is gonna be 130 degrees because angle one and angle two are supplementary. What that means is they're gonna equal 180 degrees. Keep thing to remember when you're doing these um, missing angle problems. We're looking at this line and all the way across, like a imagine like a pro protractor being there. Okay, we're gonna go from here to the other side of the line and it's gonna be 180 degrees. 180 degrees is what's gonna be very important for finding missing angle measures. Okay, so now that I know that those two together equal 180, then down here, Angle four and angle three also have to equal 180 degrees. And I know it tells me here, measurement of angle three is 50 degrees because one and three are vertical angles. So whatever this angle is, the angle on the opposite side of the line has to be the same thing. Okay. So it's gonna be 50. Same goes for two and four. If this, if angle two is 130, then angle four has to be 130 also. Or we can look at it as if this is 50, then these two lines are supplementary to, or this line is supplementary too. So if that's 50, this also has to be 130 degrees. There's multiple ways of figuring out the answers, but remember one key thing, all angles must equal 180 degrees. Real world example, a furniture designer builds the bookcase shown. Line A is parallel to line B. If the measurement of angle two is 105 degrees, find the measurement of six and find the measurement of angle three. So let's start off with six. So angle two and angle six correspond to each other, they have to equal 180 degrees because they're on the same line. So from one part of the line all the way to the other part is 180 degrees. So I'm going to take 180 degrees and I'm going to subtract the 105 degrees for angle two. That leaves me with 75 degrees. So the measurement, I'll do this over here to the side, measurement of angle six is 75 degrees. Now, the good thing that they mentioned angle three is the next one we want to solve. Okay. Angle six and angle three are, I'll write this over here, they're alternate interior angles. And alternate interior angles are going to have the same or equal measurement. So if angle six is 75 degrees and angle three is an alternate interior angle and they have the same measurement, 
the measurement of angle six, sorry, angle three is also going to be 75 degrees. Again, we're trying to find off of the 180 degrees. That's going to be the easiest way to solve these measurements. Another example. In the figure, line M is parallel to line N. Or line M is parallel to line N. And line Q is perpendicular to line P. So let me write that down. M is parallel to N. And Q is perpendicular to P. The measure of angle 1, so we're starting with angle 1, is... 40 degrees. Find the measurement, or what is the measure of angle 7? So we're looking at that. All right, so angle 7. Well, we have to go from here to there. What I'm going to start with is, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to solve this. Okay. The best thing I'm going to do is because I know that these two lines M and N are parallel, and I have a transversal P. Remember a line that, that cross, uh, intersects two lines is called a transversal. And so I noticed that 1 and 6, so angle 1 and angle 6 are alternate exterior angles and so if angle one is equal to 40 degrees then the measurement of angle six is going to be 40 degrees now you might not you might say but they're not asking us for angle six mr c but i need to find angle six because it's right next to angle seven and i'm also going to need to find angle five it looks like okay so what i can do is i'm also noticing that angle eight and angle five are opposites. So if this symbol right here is a right angle, and as you know, a right angle is 90 degrees. So there are opposites here. Angle five is also gonna be 90 degrees. So now I have 90 degrees for angle five, 40 degrees for angle six. I need to find angle seven, and it's gonna come from 180, subtract 40, which is angle 6, subtract 90, and that's going to give me the measurement of angle 7. Again, the reason is, from this line all the way over here, it's 180 degrees. There's three different angles. It doesn't matter how many angles. You just know they're going to equal 180 degrees because of that line. So 40 minus 90 is 130, or 40 plus 90, I should say. So it's minus 130. 180 minus 130 is going to be 50. So the measurement of angle 7 is equal to 50.